one of the announcements I was most excited for from the Nintendo Direct we got in February was the announcement of the Star Wars Battlefront Classic Collection. This is a compilation of the first two games developed from Pandemic Studios, the first two classic Battlefront games before EA got the rights to Star Wars, and then they did the Dice Star Wars, which honestly, even those games I enjoyed to, you know, some sort of extent, but, you know, people always clamored for the original two Battlefront games, really Battlefront 2. I mean, that is the classic, iconic Star Wars game. I think for most of us, that was probably the first Star Wars game a lot of us played, I have to imagine, right? It was such a popular kind of groundbreaking experience in a lot of ways, having this big multiplayer scale Star Wars game on PS2. And while I didn't really play the multiplayer too much growing up, you know, I played some local with my, my brother and mostly played the single player growing up. I was very excited to see this game coming over. Aspire has been doing such a great job, at least in terms of just bringing over the quantity of Star Wars games from the history of gaming, because there's been so many Star Wars games, especially in that prequel trilogy era. They've been bringing a ton of those early PS1 and PS2 games over. So Battlefront, when I saw it happen, I was like, oh, wow, finally, we've gotten so many Star Wars games on Switch and PlayStation. Like, finally, thank you. And I was just really excited to finally jump into this game because... You know, I, I played it on PS2, and I enjoyed the EA Dice Battlefronts, even though I know they're pretty different. So having this kind of new starting point for Star Wars Battlefront 2 especially was very exciting. Everybody's going to be on the same kind of playing field, new servers, new, new save files, new accounts, all that stuff. That is very exciting to me. And if you like Battlefront, it's Battlefront on modern platforms. But there's a lot of issues with this port. Let's talk about it. Hello there, everyone. Welcome back to the channel. My name is Botox Games. Now, I do want to give a huge thank you to Aspire for giving me a review code for the game on PS5. That is where I'm playing it. That is where all of my issues that I'm about to go over have been coming from. But before we get into the issues, I do want to talk about just Battlefront as a whole because I enjoy Battlefront. If you like Battlefront, you know you're gonna you're gonna like this collection. It it is a solid port in the in the you know context of just bringing Battlefront to more modern platforms. If you just want to play the single player great. I haven't had any issues with the single player so far. Well, there's one, but that's kind of related to another multiplayer thing, so we'll talk about that. The single player is fun. If you've never played these original Battlefront games, I would say watch a lot of gameplay and see if it's for you. It is definitely weird going back to an older FPS game or shooter game. Um, I mean, this game is an FPS, but most people play it third person, right? It is a little weirder going back because it, it does feel outdated in a lot of ways, but that's kind of what I was excited about, just having this kind of time capsule experience of a Battlefront game on modern platforms. That was part of the reason I was so excited for this classic collection, because it's not about, you know, grinding a, a battle pass or a season pass or unlocking and ranking up like every other shooter on the market nowadays. This is a time capsule experience from the PS2 where none of that stuff really happens. There's a ton of content, tons of heroes. They even added some new heroes. I think like Kit Fisto wasn't in the original Battlefront 2. Like there's new stuff in this game. There's just a ton of content, maps, villains, heroes. Like there's a lot of stuff in this game. So from that angle, I can't really look at the Battlefront classic collection in a negative light because it brought Battlefront to modern platforms. That's great. I That's really all I ever asked for. But I guess I also asked for some more quality of life improvements for the online experience, which they didn't really deliver on. So we'll talk about that now. All right. So the first major thing we need to address is the lack of crossplay. I, I mean, we kind of knew before release that it, that it wasn't going to have crossplay. So like, you know, it's not like a big surprise that it doesn't have it, but it's still a disappointment. I think we are in 2024 now, guys. There's really no excuse. If you don't want to have crossplay between console and PC, that's one thing. If you're worried about like console and PC, you know, like hackers bringing in their hacks to console, sure, I, I get that. That's a big issue with Call of Duty right now. But console to console, PS5 to Switch, PS5 to Xbox, what? there's really no excuse not to have that in 2024. I I know people will try to defend it, but just, just add crossplay, guys, or at least add the option to make lobbies that your friends can join on other platforms, even if it's not public parties and private, and you know, private matches, right? Even if it's just private matches that you can play with your friends on other platforms, if you don't want to dilute the PS5 player pool with Switch or something, like, just give us the option. And I'm hoping since they've been seeing so many people, you know, kind of begging for crossplay, hopefully they will go back and add that. I'm not sure what Aspire's post-launch plans are for this in terms of, you know, fixing it and adding quality of life stuff, but that's the first major thing. No crossplay. We knew that going into it, but still, still a big disappointment. And then we need to talk about the servers. So this is a roller coaster ride. If I have ever been on one for the past, like 12 hours, I've been playing this game off and on throughout the day. And there's just a lot going on. <laughs> So like I mentioned, Aspire sent me a review code on PS5, and I was playing it before it officially released, you know, to the public. And I was playing it before it officially released in North America, where I imagine the biggest player pool is. So up until 9 p.m. Pacific, I'm on the West Coast, so up until 9 p.m. Pacific, everything was working 
pretty well like there was a couple issues that you would expect from like a ps2 game right it's gonna have a little bit of that online jank but it was working there was a couple matches that were pretty laggy but for the most part everything was pretty much fine but then midnight eastern hit where the game unlocked for everybody in north america and i guess the servers just got completely swarmed and the game became completely unplayable i'll post some clips while i'm talking here but the game was just completely unplayable if you could get into a match, if you were lucky enough to get into a match, it was lagging like crazy. Just completely unacceptable. But, you know, I was giving it the benefit of the doubt. I was, you know, hopeful that, you know, it's just launch day issues. Aspire is going to push a patch. It's fine. And they pretty much did push a patch out pretty much immediately at like 11 p.m., I think, 11.30 p.m. my time. So that was great. It's a 17 gigabyte patch, which is like pretty big for a patch. I mean, this game is now like 35 gigs on PS5, I believe, which... It's, P it's PS2 games, come on, but whatever. If you don't mind the, the you know, file size, that, that's, that's fine. And this update pretty much fixed everything, at least in terms of connectivity issues. I played for about two hours after the patch released on both Battlefront 1 and on Battlefront 2, and I never experienced anything quite like I did before the patch came out where I was just like, you know, rubber banding all over the map and my ping was like a thousand or whatever. Like there was nothing even close to that after the patch released. Makes me question why they sent out review codes when that patch wasn't available. But either way, the patch seemed to have fixed pretty much all of the connectivity issues. And as of recording, that is still the case. The, the servers seem to be relatively stable. However, the patch also introduced a ton of other issues. So first things first, downloading the patch made me wipe my, my single player save data for some reason on both games. I didn't play that much, thankfully. So that was weird, but whatever, not a huge deal, I guess. But the game has also just been crashing a lot ever since that, that patch came out. Like if I'm in the server browser and I hit like, you know, search under like any specific conditions at all, the game just crashes without fail at least right now, or even just sometimes while I'm in a match and do something that I guess is maybe too intensive for the, for the old PS5 to handle, the game just crashes. This wasn't happening before the patch came out, and since the patch did release, it's been, it's been crashing a lot. It's still much more playable overall than it was before the patch, but while fixing the server issues, they have created a new issue. The game crashes a lot, which sucks now thankfully the patch did add a couple of nice things like the quick match button that wasn't there before it came out for some reason i don't know why that wasn't there they also like changed the title screen where you select both games so once again i'm not sure why they were sending out review codes when this wasn't already out kind of weird to me and then there's just a lot of other things that i would have liked to see as quality of life improvements on the original battlefronts i'm not asking for a suite of new content or anything i'm just asking for like basic basic online functionality parties would be really nice with friends you can play with friends if they either you know join a server that you're already in or if you're on playstation they can join off of you from like the playstation hub menu where they go to your profile on psn and then just join off of that although sometimes that wasn't working so some parties would have been really nice that's a pretty basic quality of life thing i imagine to add i'm not sure why they didn't do that but also the defaults for the aspire dedicated servers one in this game are kind of odd in my opinion i know this might not be what a lot of people would agree with but for all of the aspire dedicated servers of which there are a few um aim assist is not on which we're on console that's that's a pretty big deal but also like friendly fires one and stuff and it's like i get that that's like the pure battlefront experience but i don't know for for me as someone who plays call of duty and battlefield and stuff like I would like to have seen aim assist at least on some of the Aspire dedicated servers so that it's actually populated. When someone makes a, a custom room or, or creates a, a match in this game, all of the defaults are basically that. Like, no aim assist, friendly fire on, a bunch of AI. Maybe put aim assist on as default and then turn the option off if you want. That's what I would do. I, that might be a controversial take, but, you know, not a, not a huge deal. Like, I'm, a, I'm adapting, right? It's fine. But... I don't know. I would have liked to have seen at least a couple of the Aspire servers have aim assist on. With all that said, with that huge asterisk, you know, consumer warning on this game, it has been fun playing it with friends. I, I'm i happy this game came over. The port itself seems fine in terms of bringing, once again, in terms of bringing the classic Battlefront experience to modern consoles, but I wish Aspire had gone the extra mile to add a lot of quality of life stuff, you know, parties and crossplay, like I already mentioned, but also just some other things that are very wrong with this version. The game crashing, I don't know what's up with that. That wasn't happening before the patch, but I guess the patch broke it. And then before the patch came out, the servers were broken. So 
I'm hoping they'll they'll fix this pretty quickly and, and get a lot of these issues ironed out. But right now, I would say maybe wait for a sale and, and wait and see if Aspire is going to support this game and fix it whenever something does break on the back end. Because the bones are there. The bones of Battlefront are there. It's a great game. If you like Battlefront 1 and 2 on the PS2, you are going to like Battlefront Classic Collection if they can fix these damn issues. So with that said, I'm going to go try and play some more because I do want to keep playing this game, barring all of the crashing that's been happening. But um, let me know your thoughts down in the comments below. If you are playing this game, if you picked it up already digitally, it's only digital. I'm kind of hoping they do a physical. I'll probably pick that up on Switch if they end up doing that. You know, if you're playing it on other platforms or even just on PlayStation, let me know how your experience has been. Have you been experiencing all of these server issues, all of these crashes, all of these other nitpicks that I'm mentioning in this video? I would love to get a conversation going down in the comments below, especially if you're on Switch. I'm very curious how Switch is performing for this game also what's the file size on switch i'm actually not sure so let me know in the comments down below what you think of a battlefront classic collection so far um if you are new here i typically cover nintendo but this time i wanted to kind of branch out a little bit and i, I want to start doing more kind of game impressions review type videos because i don't really do that that often i'm currently like 25 hours in a unicorn overlord i know no one's gonna watch that video but by god i might just have to make it because that game is really good but yeah until next time folks peace